my friends. Let us fight together again. I have waited long for this day. We will fight with you once more. Welcome back, boss. Now that all five of us are together, it's time we go to the depths of hell itself. Video game design has undergone a number of fundamental shifts throughout the past decade, whether it's in accounting for new emergent gameplay systems or live service elements. Even in that vein, regardless of the genre and goals, designing a video game boss continues to be as difficult as ever. An adversary with patterns and a clear discernible objective may seem simple, but behind the scenes, there's a mess of coding going on to present a clear threat to the player. One that's also challenging, but not a pushover. Or perhaps very challenging because that's the game you're designing for. Or maybe a boss that's more cinematic, driving forward the narrative while not being a complete afterthought. And don't even get us started on a raid boss. With all of this in mind, it's incredible to look back on some of the most legendary boss battles in gaming's history. The end from Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater and marvel at just how well the entire affair encompassed all of those points and then some. First released in November 2004 for the PlayStation 2, Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater takes place 31 years before the events of the first Metal Gear. Instead of Solid Snake, players control Big Boss known as Naked Snake, or simply Snake. Snake is on a mission to Selenoyarsk to rescue Soviet scientist Sokolov, but things quickly go awry when his longtime mentor, the boss, betrays him, defects to the USSR, and joins with Colonel Volgan. To prevent a full-scale war from breaking out between the United States and the Soviet Union, Snake is sent back to Selenoyarsk to deal with Volgan and the boss while also stopping the nuclear-equipped Shagahod. Before all of that, he must fight the boss's Cobra unit, possessing superhuman abilities. Each member has a name that's representative of a theme or emotion and is extremely deadly at their key role. The end is the sniper of the group, one that was hyper-focused on his target to the exclusion of everything else. Born in 1860, he would be over 100 years old when battling Snake, but this didn't dull his extraordinary abilities one bit. More on that shortly. So, the stage is set. The player battles the end in Sokrovino North, South, and West. Three zones with a forest, river, and moor, providing a fairly large space to battle. You run around, looking for the end, and are suddenly sniped. It's a tranquilizer round and not lethal. Plus, it takes some time to act, so there are ways to mitigate it before falling unconscious. Should Snake fall unconscious, though, the end will take him back to Granny Gorky's prison. You'll then have to go all the way back to fight him again. Snake, it appears you were knocked out by the end's tranquilizer rounds. Yeah, but why didn't he kill me? I don't know, but I expect he's still in Sokrovieno. Until you defeat the end, you won't be able to reach the mountains. Snake, go back to Sokrovieno, and this time, finish him. Rushing in head first clearly isn't the best idea, but you'll quickly discover that the end is just operating on another level. He doesn't have a spotter, not a human one at least, can camouflage himself easily, thus being very difficult to locate, hits insane shots with incredible accuracy, and moves very quickly between spots. At first, it seems like he has no weaknesses. You could track his movements with the thermal goggles, but good luck finding him when he's prone and set up. The end also possesses a parrot that somewhat functions as his spotter, and it can be captured. Killing it will result in the end becoming more aggressive, but also makes Snake harder to track. Releasing it will allow for hearing the end's position using the directional mic, which can be invaluable information. So there are some limited but still useful tactical options. But this was a Metal Gear Solid game directed by Hideo Kojima, and one could attain victory through much more ludicrous means. The end can be seen sleeping before the fight, and comments on how his rest would have been eternal if his target hadn't shown up. His old age and tendency to fall asleep isn't just a quirk, it's his key weakness. So what do you do? Simply wait until he dies of old age? 
Well, yes. Rather, if one saved their game during the battle and then simply waited a week or so, they could load their save and find that the end had died. Upon discovering this, it was also possible to save mid-battle, quit, set the internal clock on the PlayStation 2 ahead by eight days, and achieve the same result. Sure, Snake would comment on how he failed to face the end before he passed, but a win is a win. It was one of the most ludicrous ways to defeat a boss at the time, and still retains that honor over 17 years later. But it gets even better. You can avoid fighting the end altogether. No, not by simply sneaking past him during the battle. During the story, the end is brought out in a wheelchair at Ponizovji Warehouse. Sniping and killing him during this time would completely eliminate the later boss battle, and instead, only the Ocelot unit would be fought in Sokrovino. Once again, Snake will express disappointment in not being able to actually fight the end. If you sniped the end without killing him in this part, then he would appear later with reduced health and stamina, slightly leveling the playing field if you're still keen on a proper battle. Alternatively, you could also just enter the Konami code on the map screen during the fight and just reveal his location, because why wouldn't that be a thing? But there's even more. Defeating the end non-lethally will allow one to obtain his Mosin Noggin sniper rifle. If you're successful in holding him up, you'll receive the Moss Camo, which can provide a 100% camo index under certain conditions, and also recover Snake's stamina in certain light, much like how it works for the end. The boss battle and design of Metal Gear Solid 3 as a whole showcases some of the best things about the franchise. Along with offering multiple solutions to overcoming a challenge, the player is encouraged to try out some unconventional, oftentimes bordering on the nonsensical methods, and rewarded for the same. The circumstances behind the battle help contribute to its iconic status. You are going up against a living legend that can't be defeated without extraordinary skill after all. There were no doubt a number of challenges that arose in creating this fight. Programming the end's patterns, designing the environments where it all played out, and the interweaving of various tactics while ensuring everything ran smoothly on a technical level. So it's incredible that it can play out without even seeing the end's face until it's ultimately over. It's an antithesis, like the sorrow for several other Metal Gear Solid boss fights while still staying true to their spirit. The atmosphere is tense throughout, and there's a sense of danger at nearly every turn, but Snake is never really in danger. The end doesn't use live rounds after all. There's gunplay involved, but you're not just playing a sniper match or going in guns blazing. It's as if Kojima and his team at Konami wanted to take the war game's quote, the only winning move is to not play, to its extreme and succeeded, but still programmed a damn good fight for those who wanted it. In that sense, the end is, and will always remain, a legendary boss battle. That's all for now. If you enjoy what you saw, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, now is a great time to subscribe. We upload brand new videos every single day. After subscribing, don't forget to enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next time, right here on Gaming Bolt.